you know, I always say <clears throat> for me, and I think others too, our, my best scene work in a show is in my car on the way home. Mm. It's like, oh, why didn't, why did why I not, say yeah. that or do Why that? did I say that? Yeah. Oh, I should have said this. That's of course, always the case for all of us. But by and large, it should be a lot of, uh, it should be fun. Mm. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> on, the, on that part of the report card, it's 100% there. I'm Patrick DePeters, and I'm your host of the Quiet Leaders Podcast. I'm here today with Matthew Moore, who is uh, one of my favorite people, uh, not only because he's among the most funny people I've ever met uh, as an improv extraordinaire, but also because he's a leader. Uh, he owns an improv studio that I've been a part of for the past year or so uh, here in LA called Improv for the People. That name is something we'll explore because he's all about including everyone in improv and using the art form that is improv to help heal the world and heal us as individuals and heal us as a community. And he's going to have some incredible stories that I know will uh, inspire. Uh, they will probably make you laugh. And uh, I really could not be happier to be sitting uh, with Matthew Moore here uh, for this conversation. So thank you, Matthew, for, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Pat. I hope I live up to that, <laughs> that introduction. It's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll call you Matt from here on out because I know you are a, um, a casual guy that... Um, I didn't tuck my shirt in. Uh, yeah, I you saw had, that. I, and I, yeah, that's I didn't why I didn't tuck in mine. Oh, okay, good. You, you, lo you lowered the bar, so I... I, <laughs> I did. You. Um, but you know, I what I what I said there at the beginning is is an earnest um, sort of sign of, of of appreciation and admiration for you because um, not only have I benefited from your your coaching and your studio and your community um, and met just some incredible people, but I've also learned a lot about myself through improv. And you know, I actually was first um, inspired to even try improv because of a book I read called Play. Um, and I read that book when I was going through a period of pretty bad burnout following my last mm. startup. Yeah. And one of the uh, recommendations in the book was um, to get into improv, you know, and, uh, among a number of other arts and sports and other things. And so uh, I came home from my first experience at your studio and I told my wife, that was the most fun thing I've ever done, <laughs> you know, for, for, what, you know, for some very, very nominal fee. I literally just had the most fun. Did, I uh, were you nervous? And um, you know, I, do you remember? I don't know that I was nervous. I think I was probably a little concerned. I would put my foot in my mouth properly. Like, no, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, so, but what I tell people now, uh, because I recommend everyone get into improv because yeah. I don't, it's not obviously in LA, there's quite a lot of people around, uh, that are comedians, actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so that can be intimidating actually, is that I didn't know if it was going to be mostly that kind yeah, of, right more experienced person or more people like me. And it turns out, I think, and you'll probably share more about uh, what you think of this um, assessment, but I got the sense that there's more people like me than people like um, the next Dave Chappelle, yeah. for example, or, you know, obviously that's a different type of, uh, of art and comedy, but yeah. in any case, I, I love everything you're doing. I, I, I can't wait to get into this conversation and, and hear your story. Right. So, yeah, I would love uh, for you to maybe take us back, you know, from g give us uh, give us the rundown from where you're from and, and okay. like who you are. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I'll keep it brief, but I was born in a small town in Indiana. I'm just kidding. It'd be funny <laughs> if I told you my whole life starting. Oh, from you birth. can. We yeah, got time. I don't know how much. Do we have time? Oh, we sure okay, do. Perfect. Uh, yeah. No, I uh, grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Indiana and um I've been in LA, I don't know, like 28 years now. Wow. So uh, longer, how old, can I ask how old you are? Yeah, I'm 36. So oh, God. I was a, a young and, oh, yeah, I'm getting aged. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, next time we meet, I'll have a hair like that's hair right. Like yours. That's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been here a while, but I, I was in the hotel industry for, I don't know, like over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I went to Purdue and studied, um, you know, hospitality administration and all that. So Came out here uh, about 28 years ago and was in the hotel business. I still consult with hotels and do some work mm. with um, 
uh, with Fairmont Hotels and oh, Resorts. Amazing. I work with them a lot. Down in Santa and Monica? Other, yep. So they have other hotels in LA? Yeah. Or sorry, around the country as oh, well? Oh, they've got uh, hotels around the world. I should know that, but yeah. I don't. Oh, so right. <laughs> I think so, I stayed there once. Yeah, yeah. So the Miramar is our hotel in Century City. There's um, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the Fairmont Century Plaza is, is a Fairmont. Anyway, uh, so I was in the hotel biz for a long time, and then uh, I've always enjoyed being funny. And even as a kid, my I remember my parents' friends, adult friends, would say, hey, your your son should be a comedian. He's super <laughs> funny, right? <laughs> and I've got two older sisters. They never said that about my sisters because my sisters are boring. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. They're a little boring. Um, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> Anyway, so but I remember my dad always saying, oh, you have to study math and science, Matt. you got to study math and science so you can have a good career. Mm. Look at your sisters because they both are in sciences and all that. And, uh, you know, here I come, the creative. I play the piano and mm. da, 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 that kid. Anyway, moved out here, hotel business, and uh, stumbled upon um, an improv show. I never, I didn't, didn't even know what that was, mm. but I was looking for something to do on a, on a Saturday night. So I opened the L.A. Weekly. Do you remember the L.A. Weekly? I, uh, I don't know that I do. No, you're too young. <laughs> it's a, uh, it was a newspaper, okay. right? I, I think it still exists. Okay. Anybody? Yeah, it does. Cool. Yeah, so uh, I opened it up, and I looked at the calendar section, and I dropped my finger. And I'm like, what is this, an improv show? Hmm. So I went. I, th I thought maybe it would be stand-up. That's, that's a common mm. misconception that improv is stand-up. So that was a little, we got we to gotta fix that. Um, you know, uh, anyway. How's your chance? Now's our chance. Let's fix it. Improvisation is like, whose line is it anyway? A lot of people know that okay. show. That's yep. a good reference mm -hmm. for people. So I went to uh, the show, and everyone else was laughing, but I was sitting on the edge of my seat. I'm like, what is this? They're mm. making this up on the spot, and mm. I loved it. Mm. I loved it. So I would go see improv shows like once a week after that. I couldn't get enough. Wow. And then I uh, took a, uh, an, improv, an intro to improv class. Um, this was a long time ago. And I would talk about it so much that my friends would say, uh, well, actually, it was a couple of people I worked with at the hotel. They said to me, hey, you know, you love improv so much. Would you teach me what, mm. what, you know, what you're learning? And I said, well, you know, I can teach you what I know. Um, yeah. So I thought, well, maybe I'll create a little improv class uh, for people who, are, who might be interested in. So I went to New York uh, for, <clears throat> I don't know why I was there, but I, I was there for a weekend. And I met up with a friend of mine, uh, Adam. And Adam and I were having lunch in Manhattan, and I said, uh, "Listen, Adam, I'm start. I'm thinking about opening an improv school, and uh, I think you know it should be for everybody, not just actors. You know, actors. It's great to have actors around. Mm -hmm. I'm one, so I get it. But I think it should be for everybody. And he, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's this kid eating a sandwich. Mm, wow. Well, I take yoga at a place called uh, Yoga for the People." You should call it improv for the people, <laughs> right? And it stuck. And I'm yeah. like, Adam, that's fantastic. Mm. So 16 years ago, uh, we opened uh, Improv for the People. Amazing. And uh, I remember that first class. It was a Monday night. The class started at 7, right? And I rented the basement of the old Venice Jail. Yeah, it turned wow. art gallery. It's still there. It's called Spark. It's a great place. Um, anyway, I walked into Spark. I didn't have an appointment. I had no reason to believe that they had space to rent. I don't even know why I walked in there. But I parked my car and I walked in. I said, hey, I, I want to start an improv class. Do you have any space I could rent? And the guy working there, his name is Felipe, uh, he said, uh, actually, we do. So he took me to the basement of the jail. Oh, yeah, true story. That's incredible. Yeah, the bars are still on the oh, wall. Oh, come yeah, on. No, it's true. Do you have pictures? Uh, yeah, somewhere well, yeah, put, I picture. We'll hook them up somewhere in the show notes. Okay, That's great. incredible. Yeah, and so I looked at it. And you I'm guys like, belong in there, by the way. We belong in the prison. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. So I, I rented it, and um, so our first class was on a Monday. It was 7 o'clock on Monday was the first class time, and I was there, of course, like early, and I had to get all the chairs and set up and all this good stuff. 7 o'clock rolled around. Nobody was there. Two people said they were going to come. No, three. Uh, two. Two the, for, for the first class. Mm. And they weren't there. Mm. And 7.05, they weren't there. I'm like, oh, no, this was dumb. I shouldn't have done this. This was dumb. And like 7.10, I turned the lights off, and I went, was going to my car. I thought that was so, why did I do that? And then here they turned the corner, both of them at the same time. Their cars came to the lot. They're like, we, could, we got a little lost, but uh -huh. let's try it. Yeah, try <laughs> yeah. So we go back in, turn the lights back on. The three of us had the most fun time. And then the next week, there were four of us. And then it was the next week. There were eight of us, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they were telling their friends. They tell their friends, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that was 16 years ago. And now we have 
a whole, I mean, it takes a village to make improv for the people happen. Mm -hmm. And and what a village we have, the, the best faculty members and members. We've got the best members. So we have almost 10 classes now. They're full. Mm -hmm. There's a wait list. Um, yeah, you and, didn't let me get in next month. Yeah, this no, month, I, you were like, you're at capacity. I did. I get told in line, you. buddy. I did. That's what I told you. <laughs> I was like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's so, a fantastic to hear that from you know an entrepreneur that started with that story to have now at capacity, basically, right? Well, there's a there's a desire for it. Mm -hmm. there, there's a need and desire mm -hmm. uh, for an art form that is collaborative and fun. Mm -hmm. um, Very so, welcoming too. I hope Very so. Very welcoming and, and encouraging and. Um, just kind. I, I hope think, so. Yeah, it really is. And that good. Those are the kind of words I would probably use other than the funniest thing you could ever do. Yeah. Because um, you know, you check the way I've been describing it to people is you check your ego at the door. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if you would frame it in the same way, but you, you're certainly not bringing your identity per se into onto the stage because it's not relevant. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we really push you to play characters and adopt a new point of view and and history and all that stuff. Mm. If you played a, a scene, Pat, as Pat, or really close, what we say, close to your zero, mm. like close to who you really are, okay. that's okay. Yeah, oh, it is. That's okay. okay. But we want to push you to have a range of choices mm. as well. Mm. You know, it's incredible. And that's why I think... Um, I had some little bit of experience um, in high school in a play. It was actually, I lost a poker bet and I had to um, be Peter Quince in A Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> because you, and I had oh. the most fun doing that. It was so fun. Uh -huh. And, you know, like in high school, I had friends that were like kind of the jocks and then I had friends that were a little bit more eccentric. And the eccentric ones were more in the theater and I just had so much fun with them. Why did you have fun? And, Why? Um, you know, I think it was again it has something to do with getting out of your head and being something else fully committed yeah fully committed yeah. so you know and shakespeare is obviously kind of a, a a wonderful kind of body of sorry shakespeare has created and there are people who think it's more than one person but the body of literature the body of poetry the body of playwriting is yeah. uh, enormous and diverse and very very deep at a human level yeah um and so the art form of you know theater has been something that you know I'm not I'm not a buff in, in that in any way other than what little I know, which is that you know the king would hire the jester and the yeah, right. you know the Shakespearean comedy to come and you know entertain yeah. him while he Make eats his laugh. grapes or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. right. <laughs> and so I think it's a wonderful art, and I've so not only have I learned personally that it's very very meaningful. I think it, as I said, came at a time for me where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next, and I needed to kind of get out of the box, whatever mm -hmm. that box was. Yeah. And I think it's probably among the best ways to do that yeah. and have fun. So it's not, it's like maybe unlike, let's say, theatrical work, and I, I certainly haven't done a lot of, let's call it practice in the theatrical world um, or study, let's say, but that um, it's it's like not, the, the fact that it's not serious and there's not there's nothing to study, there's nothing to memorize. Isn't that great? It's just play. It's yeah. just pure play yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, there are many elements of improv that uh, we come to learn week after week after week after week after month after year, you know year after year. It's a beast of an art form. It is fun. It should always be fun. Mm. There are days that we leave class or a show, or a corporate training or whatever it is that you're doing with with improv, and you might be frustrated. You know, I always say <clears throat> for me, and I think others too. Our, my best scene work in a show is in my car on the way home. Mm. It's like, oh, why, why did why I not, say yeah. that or do why that? Why did I say that? Yeah. Why, oh, I should have said this. That's of always the case for of all of us. But by and large, it should be a lot of, uh, it should be fun. Mm. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> on, the, on that part of the report card, it's 100% there. Yeah, good. It's so fun. And, yeah. and, and, and I also want to go back to something you said, which is the people that it, you have attracted into your studio and theater are unbelievable. Like yeah, Georgie's, cool. my wife Georgie is having lunch with Daryl. Uh, today, who we caught up with, uh, not only have I, um, you know, played on the stage with with Daryl, but uh, at, following your birthday party a couple weeks ago, your 50th, birth, 50th birthday party, yeah, that I'll was sort that. of the launch or some kind of, uh, obviously. I'll take I, 50th, thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, was it not, okay, it's not Well, 50. no, I think you're getting tripped up because I was born on that weird day, February oh, 29th. Oh, that's right, okay. That's it right. only comes every four years. Okay, so yeah, you take so out. So I never get a birthday, so I actually get... got one this year, so okay. I turned 14. So you're 16. Okay, 14. Oh, 16, oh, it's 14. Pat. Oh, it's 14. 16 <laughs> right. would make me like ancient. I'm ancient enough. I don't need your help. Okay, you I'm got 14 it. times you four. I'll do the math for you. 33. Okay, perfect. perfect. That's what I was going to guess, actually, okay, if it wasn't 16. But right. in any case. Anyway, so uh, Daryl's meeting up with Georgie. Yeah, so he's meeting up with Georgie, and, and I'm really, lo I, I'm like, I'm like, Daryl, so check this out. It's actually really fun. Daryl wants to be a coach. 
and I'm an executive coach and he's wanting to be an um, improv coach and like maybe life coach, hybrid, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's call it. Because I think they're very correlated or wow. sorry, parallel kind of approaches in a lot of ways. But for Georgie, who's also in a time of transition um, and wanting to get kind of a creative, the creative juices going again, yeah. I was really excited for her to be coached by Daryl, who's now starting his coaching practice and whatnot. And I knew they were going to, they were going to hit it off and they will hit it off. So like, he's an example of some amazing people there that, um, you've attracted because the, 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 your, um, your product is so authentic and it's Mm. so great. And it's Mm. so, uh, it's, it's about the people's experience rather than, um, like the studio is almost, it's just like the, um, the, some 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 kind of interface in a way, but it's not really the the product. The product is the people and, and you and your yeah. guidance. And yeah. for those that don't know, like Matt will call like a, a scene of some kind. So he might say, let's say there's 12 people in a class. You might say, I need three people. Three people raise your up. hand, yep. hit the stage, and let's then go. he'll give you a, a prompt. And sometimes he'll kind of crowdsource the prompt to, to the group, and then game on. You know, you, it could it. be a couple minutes, it could be 10 minutes, or, or yeah. whatever, and just. The fluidity of the art is unbelievable. It's like you can't help yourself but smile like ear to ear. It's been my my experience. So, um, you mentioned something about corporate training, and I do want to talk to talk about that down the line because I actually think that's a brilliant, brilliant um, approach to um, to training, to to leadership, to uh, corporate culture building, and rebuilding in a lot of cases. Yeah. And so I love that. We're going to talk about that, but. But before we do, um, I would, you know, uh, I would like to hear what it is about improv uh, rather than, let's say, comedy or acting or other things that you may have been involved in that um, that really captured your heart. Uh, well, I think the the spontaneity of it uh, is is number one. And, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a bizarre it's a bizarre recipe. Right, it, because it's where spontaneity meets collaboration, mm. um, and uh, you know you need to be grounded at the same time. Uh, be willing to what we call gray spacing or just taking risks on stage, uh, all the while taking care of your scene partner. I mean, there's a lot going on in a in a well executed improv scene, whether it's two of you or ten of you. Right, I've done. We've all done. Those of us in improv, mm-hmm. we've done scenes. A lot of our scenes are two-person scenes. Many of them are three-person scenes. Some of them are more. Mm-hmm. And, man, it it takes a real awareness of mm-hmm. what's going on mm-hmm. and at the same time willing to take risks. And, you know, so I love that. Yeah, no, I I, I, I love that too. And, and I think that's, yeah, spontaneity is absolutely the right word. I will say, going back to my, what what I was potentially a little bit nervous of going into it was, the fact that you have to be really paying attention because yeah. you don't know what's going to come. Right. You don't know what's going to come, and you have to pick up on these subtle clues, sometimes very subtle um, signals that kind of give you a direction as to where your partner is trying to go. Right. Or And then you can, of course, take it in a different direction if you want. And what's great is if you get it, quote, unquote, wrong, and there's really no wrong in improv in a right. way. What I've been telling people is, in, unless you hurt someone, that's probably the only wrong that you can. Yeah, unless you set out to sabotage a scene or yeah. or, or whatever, or if you're not yes handing a, a scene, you know, is it the end of the world? Yes, it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. I know I I know I because uh, you so helpfully give comments after the scene. Oh, we beat people up. People, people come up. to learn. No, it's great. Yes, it is fun, but it's not a improv for the people. Is not a hold hands. Let's have a picnic kumbaya moment. Mm. We work hard. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a challenging art form. We work hard. We expect a lot from our members. We give a lot. I hope yeah, we do. Yeah, I think we do, do. Um, and we get it in return. But um, yeah, it's. Um, I feel like I cut you off with the whole yes ending. It, to, to come in to sabotage a scene, which you know, I, I can't even think of someone who's ever done that to mm. purposely ruin a, a moment. But we can. We. We don't say mistakes. They're like golden moments. To your mm. to your point, mm. there aren't. There's no failure. In fact, we embrace mm. odd information or things that come out of nowhere. But mm. Why? Because we can play with that and justify it, mm-hmm. and that's very yeah. fun for us. Yeah, yeah it's fun for and us. And it as carries. What's so fun too is it carries beyond the scene. Oh yeah. So you can have what happens is you can have like the three people get called up. They do the you know three or four minute skit of some some kind. Is skit the right word? Uh, yeah. Not scene. Sort scene. Okay. Yeah. Scene. See, I'm still learning. <laughs> um, and then. There'll be another group that comes up. Could be a greater number of people. Could be everyone or what sure. have you. And 
And that what's so fun about it is because everyone's paying attention to everything that's going on, some of the concluding scenes actually wrap in all the things that have been happening throughout the throughout the class, which we is can, so so fun. Yeah, it's totally. Fun. So you play. Mm. So you, it's like you can pick a thing that happened at the very beginning of class, bring it back to that the last ten minutes of the class in a new scene that yeah. is just right. incredible. It's like right. oh my god, that's genius. You know, to, to your point um, about you, you're saying you have to pay attention, you have to be always always be aware, and you do. I ask every person that joins Improv for the People the same. I ask them many questions, but I always ask, um, uh, do you have good credit? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> did I ask you if you have good credit? Uh, you look you like a guy that you, has good I, credit. I have perfect credit. You, you look like you have perfect credit. I think it's the, I glasses. No. It's the glasses. It is. It's all, it's all scam. It's, yeah, it's all scam. <laughs> when I was, yeah, anyway, we'll talk about it another time. <laughs> That's another We're episode. in Hollywood, so you yeah. know, people, with, uh, people with Lamborghinis a lot of times don't have good credit. But in any case, go ahead. <laughs> A Lamborghini. Just kidding. Oh, that was your yellow one. It's the yellow one. Yeah, uh, Improv is a lucrative business. Oh yeah, I'm rolling in the cash. Um, <laughs> it, you know, to, to be present in the moment. That's what we're looking for. So mm. my point, going back, I ask everyone, why are they here to take an improv class? And I get a lot of answers. I'm going to write a book. I have a book in me, and oh, I'm going to get that done. I'm going to hold you accountable. Okay, good. Yes, hold and, me accountable. And, and I'm going to write one too, by the way. Do it. Okay, we can maybe. I'll, I'll write. Uh, I'll write your foreword, and you write mine. Yes, How about that. Totally. Seriously. Absolutely. Uh, and the question I always ask, I'm sure to ask, is why do you want to take an improv class? And many people answer, I want to be quick on my feet. I hear that all the time. Yeah, I want to be quick on my feet. And I get that. I get that desire to be quick on your feet. I understand that. But it's not really what we're after. Can I pause you there? Why yes. do you think people say that? I think people uh, like to be the life of the party and they're too shy. Mm. I think people want to have a witty comeback at work in the mm. board meeting, yep. but they feel like they'll be judged. Mm. Uh, I think... They want to be funny on a date or, or quick-witted on a date. Yep. Don't yeah. blame them. Yeah. No, I get all those Great. things. Humor I sells. Get, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I get all well, the, those yep. things. Yep. But what they're really after is less than being quick on your feet. It's more about being present and in the moment. And, um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> new improvisers will come into the studio, and sometimes they, they just go for the joke. You know, improv is not about jokes mm -hmm. or one-liners. That's stand-up. Yep. That's a different art form. I'm getting into that too, by the way. Daryl, yeah. uh, actually, I have a meeting this afternoon with someone from Improv for the People um, called um, Alan. Sorry, Alan. Oh, one of our Alan's? Yeah, you're Alan. We have one of your Alan's. We have he two Alan's. your birthday. Which you don't even know all the people at your birthday? No, we have two Alan's. Oh, okay. He's the one who looks closer. To, he lo looks like me in a way. He's tall. <laughs> yeah, and he looks like me. Yeah, he's tall and looks like you. Yeah, yeah he's, he's great. Yeah. He, seems, he seems terrific. He's kind of like deadpan. Oh, that's Alan. Yeah, that's yeah Alan West. He's great. He's fun. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to like mentor me to learn comedy because I'm like, I got some good stuff. Alan has done stand up for I like a long to think time. I might, have, I mean, the thing, <laughs> I have four pets. I have uh, an English wife, and we, you know, somehow has translation issues on <laughs> what's happening. Even, even though it's technically the same tongue, there's a different, uh, different sort of translation sometimes. Well, you're doing a bit right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. So there's this great, I remember when I, I lived in England, uh, in London, when I was, uh, I did an investment banking kind of like the, the mothership sent so me. So you to, have good credit? Yeah, I do have good credit. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, so I was there in London, and um, I, I was, you know, getting immersed in the uh, British culture and working with a very, very international bank with so people from all over Europe, but also, you know, Africa and Middle East and what have you. But the English people, um, even though they, that wasn't the majority, actually, I don't think it was. Maybe it was about half, but probably less. Um, they would say things that like I needed like this is this translation table. If you Google like what British say what Americans hear, Got it. it's incredible. Got it. So it'll be like if they say something like, um, oh, that like uh, that's uh, they can say like, oh, th that's not such a bad idea. And like the American hears like, oh, he doesn't like my idea. Really what he means is like, that's a brilliant idea. Like oh, that kind of right. So like that's an example. But th and there's a whole table. You can Google it and. Hook it up in the show notes uh, because it's 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 a funny thing and we've I there's so many examples of the British humor not either not trend it's a very particular kind of humor um, which I love yeah I love I it too. it's very funny and they can be crude and yeah. they can like just say whatever they want and they all get it like there's right. you know um, it's, it's it's really fun in that way whereas I think Americans are more likely to get offended yeah. we're very sensitive very sensitive people Are the people sensitive in the Midwest or is that is that rumor not true? Um, yeah, I heard there are a bunch of well, I haven't lived in the Midwest. Out there. For I'm a just long kidding. Time. I know they're like some of the best people in the country. <laughs> yeah, no, Midwesterners are are great. Um, uh, yeah, I I suppose I th I think in in general, people 
well, I don't want to get in trouble for saying anything. I don't care if I get in trouble. I got you back. I think, yeah, I think people in the co- world of comedy are just a little, we're way more sensitive than we used to be. Mm. Way more sensitive. And I think that does us a disservice in comedy. I'm totally with you. Uh, yeah. I think Dave Chappelle talks about this a lot. Uh, a number of comedians do. I mean, you know, I think any number of comedians have probably at some point taken the, the heat. Yeah. And I think that that is really unfortunate because comedy is a way to say the thing that needs to get said. You know, in a way, there's always a kind of truth in a lot yeah. of what, ha- what is said yeah. that gets you thinking. And like at a minimum, that provokes an idea that might not be the thing that is the, you know, the the dogma, the the established kind of norm or whatever it is that surfaces important yeah. things. Yeah. Also, it, uh, I agree with what you just said. Also, it can celebrate people who are different than than us. I, I, I you know, you got to be careful. You, you, I don't think a comedian should set out to offend people just to get cheap laughs. Mm. I think we can do better than that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was I used to teach stand up for a long time, and I was I remember being asked uh, by there's maybe twenty. And we're kind of getting off the improv track here, but that's okay. I'll bring you back. I'm a good host. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm not doubting your path. Uh, come on, you train me. Don't fuck it up. Yeah, I, well, yeah if I don't if can I, I screw this up, it's not gonna get a reflection on it's your not... Yelp reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just said a dirty word on your. What'd you say? I said fuck. Oh, it's okay. Is Everything right? goes. Yeah. Okay. We're adults only. On YouTube, they make you say whether it's meant for children. I'll say yes. You'll say. <laughs> uh, funny. Uh, I oh, funny, uh, yeah. yeah. So I was asked in the stand-up class. You know, uh, <clears throat> we got on this topic of of. Uh, sensitivity and all this stuff and one of the comedians up-and-coming comedians asked me uh, he says are you offended by gay jokes i'm the gayest guy in los angeles uh, i'm not really i'm pretty gay but, uh, you know i could be gay. i don't know what was the, what was the way you phrased it last time we met uh i'm You're the, the worst, worst gay I'm the guy wor- my friends tell me i'm the worst <laughs> gay guy ever and, and why uh, i don't i know who madonna is i don't i respect <laughs> her as an artist i don't know her whatever i don't yeah i don't care yeah i don't i don't uh you know so this comedian asked me hey are you offended by uh, straight comedians doing jokes about gay people. Mm. I'm like, no. I, here, here's why I'm offended. This was my answer then. It's still my answer. I'm not offended. I like a great joke, but it's got to be funny. Yeah. It's, yeah. If it's well crafted, well written, and well delivered, and it's funny, I, I'm, I'm the laughing the hardest mm. at a good gay joke, right? But when it's mm. dumb and it's it's just delivered to, as for shock value or whatever, it's like mm. I'm not mad. Mm. I just think it's stupid. So. Uh, we will go back to improv in a second, but before we leave the comedy world, what do you think makes for that great delivery, the great kind of, um, you know, like the, for the joke to land? Like what, mm. what, what makes that? Oh, it's all, you know, it's all in the, the timing and where, you, where certain words land mm. and, you know, uh, there's, there's all kind of the minutia of, of delivery, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, some people are just talented. There, there's, yeah. Let's not forget talent. Mm. They're, they're, the, you know, there's some very talented stand-up comics, and for yeah. some reason, they can say something that lands and it's hysterical, where the yep. others could say the same thing, and it just doesn't work. Yep. They're talented. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, I in, in some ways, it's a dumb question because I, I, it's the kind of intangibles in some ways. It's yeah. the right. mannerisms. Like for example, Dave Chappelle. Every time I watch Dave Chappelle, I'm like, this guy's a pro. Yeah, he is a pro. He yeah. can tell stories. He can do a build-up and go in a direction you didn't expect. Yeah. And then he'll do things like bang the, um, he'll he'll tap the microphone on his on his when he laughs, and that kills me. It kills me. It's so funny, yeah. because it's like, if if the joke doesn't crack you up as a comedian, then why 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 do you think it's gonna crack other people? Yeah. Up? But there is yeah. also, there are some comedians that tell jokes and they're so deadpan that that that's actually that's the funny style. thing. Absolutely. So like the style thing, that all these different Absolutely. types of it. Yeah. So all right, back to improv. Back to you. Yeah. Back Let's to my back. my guest here. Let's go back to me. So. Um, would love to hear some stories of like, you know, maybe some, some students that you've had that have, um, really, you know, grown through improv or, you know, maybe surprised you in some ways. And then I'd also like to hear if there's been, um, anyone that was, um, you know, they came with an agenda that was not at all aligned with like your mission. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll start with the first question. Yeah, please. I'm not supposed to ask two questions at once. That's what they tell coaches. So I'm going to get a negative question. Yeah, you just got a Negative. demerit. Yeah, I did, demerit. I did get a demerit. And if you don't think that I didn't clock that, you're wrong, sir. Well, I did. I'll send you. you well, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I'm. I, the first question is very easy to answer. I, I see growth in our members at Improv for the People all 
the time. And we're month to month, like a gym membership. Mm. That's how we're structured. Mm. Uh, uh, and the vast majority of our members will stay for months, years, and like over a decade. Mm. We have many of our members that have been wow. alive to be for over 10 years. Wow. One woman's been there 16 years. And that's she was not, the first one in the parking lot that she was, pulled she, it. That's right. Was she? Yeah, she's one of them. That's terrific. Yes. Yeah. So I the love whole time. that. Yeah. That's so great. Right? It's, you know, in the world of, because like I last 10 years or so, I've been an entrepreneur um, building all different kinds of businesses. Last last thing before my current project uh, in, in coaching um, was a, a dog food company. Before that, it was financial services in the film space and production, all these things. And, and so I started to like learn all these different like key things that really matter for a business to work. Um, and a lot of times you learn the hard way at that. But one of the key things is retention, which is like, yeah. if you get someone, if you're locking someone into a contract for a year, you have guaranteed retention, but then you could have a fallout because if the product isn't good enough, oh, they'll be gone the next they won't day. renew, right? Yeah, but they gone the next day. Yeah. Whereas if you give them a 30 day out, anyone's willing to try that. And then the renewal is basically a sign that your product is good. Yeah, and and that's, that's great. So uh, anyway, <laughs> so um, I see, I see growth in our members all the time. Mm. So, uh, you know, funny, funny, I think it's, it's a good story. I asked a member years ago, he was probably, oh, he's probably early 20s. And he was so nervous in his first class. And a lot of people are very nervous, and they should be. They're mm. coming to a building that they've never been to. Mm. They're coming, to, they're surrounded by people they've never met. They're doing a art strange form. man that seems this to be telling tall, them what to do. Bald, gorgeous man. <laughs> Who's 16 or 13? He's, We're not sure. No one knows. You know what, Pam? 13. <laughs> 13. 13. 13. In that case, I don't even know if we're I'm allowed to have I this don't conversation. Know. This is really <laughs> kind of awkward. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so they should be nervous. You know, it's kind of weird to me if people say, oh, if they don't come in, you know, nervous. Anyway, mm. he was particularly nervous. Okay. And after class, he kind of like hung around. Everyone else went home and he's like lingering around. So I went up to him and I said, uh, yeah, I got the sense he wanted to talk to me. And yeah. I said, are you doing all right? I said, you did great in class today. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm nervous. And I said, what's going on? He goes, well, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, yes, mm. I'm here. Mm. Tell him to talk to me. And he says, the reason uh, you asked me before class why I want to take this, why I want to take improv at, you know, at, at IFTP. And I said, oh, I want to be have better, better communication skills. And I said, yeah, that's good. He goes, it's more than that. Mm. And he got all kind of like serious. I said, what is it? What's going on? He said, um, I'm, you know, I'm getting into my mid-20s and I don't have a girlfriend and I get really nervous around girls and women. I can't, I get so shy to walk up to them and talk to them. I don't know what's going to happen. And he went all, it just started spinning. Mm. And I'm going to be single all my da 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 da. Right. I said, hey, 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 just take a breath. Mm. Okay. Let's, you know, keep taking classes. And this is definitely going to help you take risks and be more confident mm. and all this good stuff. And he's like, okay, I'll trust this process. So uh, you probably have already guessed where this story is going. He's dating Angelina Jolie. And he's dating Angelina That's Jolie. That's incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Well done. It was not good. You made that happen? Yeah, I made that happen. That's terrific. Yeah. That's really, yeah. You should put that on the website. I should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if nothing else, I mean, you get a, you get a pretty girlfriend or a boyfriend or I was in a movie with her once. Really? Yeah. That's was terrific. In movie. You surprised Let me, me every day. I, I returned. Uh, the young man went on a date like four months later, and he waited after class. He goes, I went on a date last weekend, and we're going on another one. Wow. So that's the end of that that's, story. Okay, terrific. Those success stories are very fun. I love right? that. Yeah. So I will say this, though. <laughs> what? You mentioned the dynamic with um, this this guy being a bit nervous around women. Yeah. I'm not nervous around women, but I didn't I didn't want to put my foot in my mouth or do something that was somehow inappropriate. Mm. And and I'm I'm obviously I'm not inappropriate, but I, I actually didn't know that because people can be have way different kinds of sensitivity yeah. to such to a scene where you say something and it's meant to be oh, come right. across in a certain way and then right. and then right. someone can get really offended and hurt by that. So I will say that actually did go through my mind. Um and I'm not sure if you've heard that before, but it's just you know the um, the Me Too movement, all that stuff. It's like well, you cannot step. Old. Let me be clear, and I want to clear up anything I said earlier that might be misconstrued. Mm. I'm not of the mind that you could just say anything, anything as long as it's funny, go mm. for it. And that's not what I'm saying. Mm. I think there is a there's definitely a level of respect yep. of others uh, that always has a place on stage, always has a place in the classroom. I didn't answer the second part of where are the, have we experienced any members that just kind of mm. didn't fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's but very rare. I think in 16 years, I call it the email. Oh, right. I've right. had to send a, the email maybe, <laughs> maybe four times. Right. So right. that's pretty good. Oh, that's really good. That's pretty good. You told me, so we got together recently and I twisted your arm to even show up here today. So um, that was the, a lot of fun. Yeah. Right, Painful experience, it. but in any case, uh, you said something that stuck with me and something I want to talk about. Okay. You said that you believe improv, the arts in general and improv in particular can heal the world. Yeah. Same, no, I, well, I have a, um, I do believe that. And um, a couple thoughts I have on that. I, I remember one time uh, years ago, I was, I don't know, I, the world felt like it was going to, shit and in a lot of ways it's, it still feels that way anyway i was we had 14 people in class and maybe this was not my best moment in in a classroom but um <clears throat> i uh came to class maybe i was just coming off of watching too much news uh and Came to class anyway. We're in the middle you of watch class. Cartoons. I watch cartoons. <laughs> You're right. What's your favorite? Yep. Don't, uh, uh, hands down, uh, Wiley Coyote. Okay, that's your story. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. And uh, in the middle of class, <laughs> I uh, I stopped class. In the middle of a scene, I said, you guys stop. Stop, stop. And I stood up. They're all looking at me like, oh, no, what's he up to now? Hmm. And so I want you to look around. Look around. Look around this room. And they're like, they did. And so what do you see? Uh, imp improviser. I said, no. Yes. But look around this room. Right. This is a this is a snapshot of humanity. We have white people, black people, Asian people, straight people, gay people, religious people, Christian people, Jewish people, non church, unchurched, non church. And I said, look around. We're all getting along mm. because we're celebrating each other. We're mm. all getting along. Of course, they all looked at me. They gave me like, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and then we were back to improv. Right. But I was struck by that. Yeah, I was really struck. So improv can heal the world. Say more. So years ago, I was approached by uh, a woman, uh, and I knew her. Her name is Julie Marner, and Julie is fantastic. <clears throat> and uh, I hadn't seen you know how life goes. You don't see each other for years. But anyway, all yep. of a sudden, she calls me up. She goes, hey, let's have dinner. So I was excited to, to re reunite. We go have dinner. She says to me she is the executive director of a, um, of a nonprofit, and she tells me that, uh, about the nonprofit. And um, and turns out it's a nonprofit that <clears throat> goes into a country in uh, Africa, and the nonprofit is there to help young, particularly all people there, but to help young people learn English and uh, get on their feet and learn about business and uh, and all that good uh, education stuff. And you know, I'm I'm listening to her, and she says to me, and uh, this summer. Uh, five of us are going to, uh, the country is Burundi, Burundi. She says, uh, five of us are going to Burundi, five Americans. We're going to Burundi and we're going to do all of our educational tracks and you're going with us. And, uh, I said, Part, what? <laughs> she says, you're going with us. I said, what are you, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm going where? Burundi. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bur, bur what? <laughs> right? <And> Birmingham? <laughs> she, Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. And. She laughed and she goes, no, I'm serious. She goes, uh, I want you to come with us. This is this w one reason I love Julie Marner. She doesn't ask. When she wants something because she knows the value in it, she's going to tell somebody. That's why you're, I, you're, you're the, here. Honestly, I do the same you're, sim you. you're very similar in that. <laughs> yeah, in is that, that right? Way. Honestly. Yeah, I'm a yeah, tough cookie. I, yeah, uh, well, you're a pain I, in the ass I if I you am. get down to it. Do you know, dog and, and a bone. I'll, I'll, yeah, no, it's great. Well, it's great. Sometimes you have to you know, bang down the door. You know, She did that for yeah, me. Well, and she looked at me right in the eye. She goes, you're going. And I said, what are you talking about? We need you to come with us to to teach improv to these young Burundians to help with their English skills, mm. which is brilliant. Mm. And and she didn't ask me. She told me the dates. I'm like, I don't even know where really Bur is brilliant, Burundi is. is. Brilliant. Yeah. And she, she laughed. She goes, well, here's the continent. I'll do it to the camera. Right, right in the middle is uh, the country of Burundi. It's very, very small. It is often ranked the poorest country in the world. Wow. Year after year after wow. year after I year after know. year after year. Right? So flash forward four months later, I'm getting vaccines and, and get everything, shots, and, and mm. I had to get a, you know, um, uh, you know permission. A from, I had to get a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. I had to get permission from their government to go, which wow. is harder than it is sounds. Is that right? Yeah. 
And I also got a letter from the United States of America saying, I, to my email saying, you know, we, we you understand. I have an email. Oh, it's I have a confirmation account. code. Someone <laughs> yeah, we're even. <laughs> we're almost here. Okay. So I get this email from the U.S. government saying, hey, we understand you have uh, plans, travel plans to Burundi. You can go as an American, but we highly suggest that you change your plans. Uh, so at the time, this was in 2018, I believe. Uh, a few years prior to that, the country of Burundi went through a horrible um, war. There was bloodshed, and there, there are. I, I need to. I should know this. There are either two or three uh, groups of people that live in Burundi, and they're always at odds. I think it's two. And um, so, years prior to me going there, that it was a war-torn small country. And so, uh, but I went. Okay, so I go, save you a lot of details here. I get to Burundi, fly into the capital of Bujumbura, Burundi, and um, <clears throat> I, I am, uh, my myself and my four American colleagues, we were all white, and we were, the five of us I know were the first white and only white people these Burundians have ever seen in their lives. They were just so interested in us and, and who we were and, um, and it was it was beautiful. They may be they may be financially poor. The country might be very very poor, and it is. But these people are very very rich mm. people. They are beautiful, okay. alive, driven, phenomenal people. Mm. And I couldn't get enough of them. Uh, so I'm there, and I'm teaching improv to a group of ten young people. Then the next session is another group of ten, and mm. you know, and their English skills range from non-existent to I know some sentences. Okay. It was rewarding. For what it was, it was very rewarding. The last day, the last full day of, the, of my visit to Burundi, uh, we were with 70 people ranging in age, probably from 11 to 80. And I wasn't supposed to be, I wasn't programmed that day. Improv wasn't part of the day. I was just there. And uh, I thought my work had been, was done. And so the, uh, Julie was speaking to the whole group of 70 and they were understanding some of what she said. Many of them were not understanding anything that she said. But by the beauty of body language and tone, they understood everything that she said. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And um, she then looked at me and says, Matt, let's do some improv with everybody. I'm mm -hmm. like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. I guess 70 people? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so he said, yeah. yes, sure, no problem. Inside, I'm like, what the hell do I do? Yeah. So I get everybody's outside. I get everybody to stand in a circle in this field. And I really don't know what to do. Uh, uh, that's a lot of people. Mm. So I just decided that um, I'm going to have a ball in my hand, right? Mm. I don't have an actual ball, but I have, we call it space work. It's just I have a ball. And I just started tossing it. I'm going to do it right <laughs> to the camera. I just started tossing it, right? And then I mean, they're just looking at me. And I just started looking, having eye contact, and a little smile, and I just was tossing the ball. Huh. And then huh. there's a hush over the circle of 70 plus people. I set the ball on the dirt. I made eye contact way across the circle to this kid. He's probably 11. And I kicked the ball to him. And I thought to myself, please, God, please just let him accept the ball and kick it to someone else because that's all I want to do. And not hurt here. anyone with the ball. And right? don't hurt anybody with the, the yeah. space for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I kick it over and he looks around and he looked at me straight and he's way over there. He goes, he was the most adorable. I get a little choked up with this story. But anyway, he's an adorable kid. And he looked at me, and I went, mm -hmm. and he looked at the ball, looked back at me, and goes, I said, mm -hmm. and then he made eye contact with someone else, and he kicked the ball to that person. And that person kicked the ball to someone else. And by the time a few minutes passed, one of them picked it up and was doing soccer moves mm -hmm. with it in the middle, and everyone's clapping. We're throwing the ball around. And this is the most beautiful thing, right? So I get tapped on the shoulder by the woman next to me. She's probably in her 50s, 60s. She pulls me out of the circle while they continued the game. And she's all puddled up in her eyes. She goes, do you know what's, do you know what's happening here? And I said, yeah, we're doing some improv with a fake ball. <laughs> and she goes, no, no, it's much more than that. She goes, my brother died. He, he was killed right here on this, right here mm. in this field by people from the other side, right, who were represented in the circle. And she says, this is the first time as the two different groups that we have gotten together, not fighting, and we're smiling and laughing with each other. I just want to let you know that that's what, that what's happening here. Uh, I will never forget that. Uh, it was really an amazing moment in my life and career. 
And to all see, that's really you know, it's really incredible. Yeah, it really I, is incredible. It was nuts. And you know, so I went back to, and I'm not patting myself on the back. Anybody that does improv or promotes improv, you know, that we're, that's what this art form does. Mm. So I went back to my hotel room, King's Conference Hotel. They were very proud. They were and probably are very proud of that hotel. It's the first one they really built. Um, anyway, that's where they I got to stay. And uh, that night, I was leaving back, coming back to the United States the next day. Uh, and it's a hall. It's on the other side of the world. Anyway, I get a call. And uh, and uh, the lady says, hi, I'm calling from uh, Ambassador Casper's office. I said, oh. <laughs> and uh, she said, the uh, ambassador, this is the United States ambassador to Burundi. The ambassador would like to know uh, when you're leaving. And uh, I said, oh, well, I leave, I leave tomorrow in the afternoon. We'll send a car for you tomorrow morning. The ambassador would like to meet with you. So they send this black car to the, my hotel. They pick me up. We go down the dirt roads of Bujumbura, and we arrive at this beautiful building. It's a gorgeous building. It's, I would say it's the most beautiful building there, but, and it belongs to the United States. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine the layers of security to mm -hmm. get into the United States Embassy. I get in. I'm overwhelmed. I sit in a big lobby, mm. uh, and then the, all of a sudden the assistant comes and gets me. We go upstairs to the ambassador's office and opens the door, and Ambassador Ann Casper welcomes me, and she's from San Diego, and I tell her my experience, what I just told you guys. And uh, we both looked at each other, and she says, you know, the arts, and she knows the history of Burundi mm. more than, as well as anybody, right? Mm. She's their ambassador. She's our ambassador there. Yeah. And she says, you know, the arts, the arts, have a chance of healing this country. Mm. Um, I just thought it was one of the most beautiful um, experiences of my life. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we're going to wrap this up with a couple of last questions. Um, who are your role models? Oh, my gosh. Uh, or a hero. Or someone you want to thank. Those are three questions. Wow. Well. And they don't have to be alive and you don't have to know them. Oh, really? Yeah. You can go historical figure if you want. Historical figure. Yeah, I want to. I'm actually going to be bringing really, on like experts uh, such as yourself to talk about important historical figures because the, the there are, many of them are my heroes. So yeah, um, take it any which direction you like. Well, you know, I, I suppose this is the answer a lot of people give, but it's true for me too. Is my parents were always, uh, you know, cheering me on in life, and I think that. I, I knew that I, I think they knew that kid was different. I mean, that you know, I grew up in a small town in Indiana, very Catholic family and, mm. and all that. And uh, when I look back, I, I know that I must have been, you know, I was, I was the little, probably they knew I was gay. Maybe, I don't know if they did or not, but they didn't give, they didn't give a rip. Mm. Um, that's amazing. And that's not always true with it. Not to, that's a different podcast, but yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'll put it, I'll leave it at this, that, that uh, they just they just loved me being me, and they they did everything for me, and I think my sisters would say the same for them to to be ourselves no matter who we were. I think when my dad finally realized that his son was not going to go down the route of math and science and engineering like mm. his daughters did, uh, he really was just became very supportive of me. So yeah, they're 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 at the top of the list. Um, Love that. I have one other person I'd like to mention. Sure. Uh, I was in the hotel business for a million years, and uh, about the last three months of my uh, tour of duty in the hotels, the GM, I was director of operations in the hotel, which is typically number two, okay? Is that equivalent in the, in the film world to, like, uh, featured, featured, featured um, extra? extra. Yeah, it was a featured extra. Yeah, it was a featured extra. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay, I got you. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, so as the general manager, then director of operations, and then uh, the rest of the staff. So I'd worked in hotels for 20 some years. So I landed at director of operations. The GM, who's my boss, uh, you know, who I, his name is Henry Bermelly, uh, came into my office once and he goes, I want to talk to you. I said, what's up? He said, every time you talk about running out to take an improv class, or at that time I was teaching one class a week, every time you talk about teaching improv or performing improv mm -hmm. or even doing stand up or acting, you light up, you light up, Matt. And when I ask you what's going on in the hotel, you're good. You tell me what's going on. I know you have a passion for this, the property and, and the business. And don't get me wrong, you're great. But when you talk about comedy and entertainment and improv, you light up. And then he shut the door. He was still in my office. He shut the door. He goes, I need you to resign. I want you to resign. 
and go live your life. Go wow. live what you were supposed to do. It's incredible. And, um, and, you know, it's kind of shocking when your boss tells you to resign. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so he left. And I called my dad, like, the next day. And I told my dad this. And my dad, you know, small town Indiana guy, right? He said, do it. Mm. He goes, Henry's right. Do it right. Give him 30 days. Don't give him two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a big position. Just give him a month or so. And then work your way into a new path. That's Amazing. It was amazing. That's amazing. It was in my forties, right? That's it, amazing. It, it was it was really really great, and I did that. And I every once in a while, you know, Henry's moved on with his career, and he's been at all these wonderful properties. That he's a brilliant hotelier. But I'll drop him a note every once in a while and just thank him because uh, so that that's someone I look up to. I'm, I'm really happy that you you um, you offered that that story and that that kind of um, thank you letter because I'll, this project is a thank you letter as well. Like yeah. it's for me and for. Everyone that's on, it's a kind of, um, you know, the, I don't know about you, but I, I get the sense that you have this too, where you think about the, the person you want to thank from 20 years ago, the teacher that believed in you, the coach right. that told, right. taught you, and um, and yet you never get around to writing the letter. Write the letter. Write the letter. What you're doing here is fantastic, yeah. by the way, Pat, and I'm really happy to be part of it. Um, I appreciate that. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real really honor to have you, and to I, I honestly think you're just a remarkable person um, in every respect, and I've learned a lot from you, and I'm inspired by you, and got to get people more people in improv so where can they find where can people find uh mr matthew moore improv for the people.com that's it that's it and you do corporate trainings which we didn't talk about but i will say i co-sign that all yeah no that's a that's a real quick that's a um co savvy companies that know the value of improv in the workplace mm. that's not every company mm. but savvy companies who know the value of improv trainings will bring me in and not just me the the faculty at improv for the people mm. we have certified corporate trainers that are on our staff uh, we go in and do team builders with companies. We use the fun fundamentals of improv to um, increase communication skills, problem solving, conflict management, teach empathy, mm -hmm. leadership, there's leadership, yep. and followership, which yeah, no, is a part of leadership. Well, there's a there's a concept in improv. We, we don't follow the leader; we follow the follower. Mm. So anyway, we get into all that. So uh, it's very effective, and there's a lot of good takeaways. Plus, it's a lot of fun. Everybody laughs. Yeah, it sounds so amazing. That no more rope course you know fallbacks well, or whatever you know, when that has its place i suppose but yeah improv is more fun it's, it's funny because when companies call me i'll say well i know you did the escape room last year yeah, so yeah. let's do something the, how yeah. did you know i'm like i just know uh -huh. we, we all know you didn't escape yeah. room, which is great escape yeah. rooms are fun but um yeah so there's information on that at uh, improv for the people.com as well amazing um i will also say yeah improv for the people is an organization that um i tend to continue partnering with uh, right. obviously um, in the executive coaching business, I, I think it could be helpful to have that kind of um, entity of sorts to the extent um, th th this is a good thing. <laughs> it, uh, basically vouch for that kind of that kind of training because I think it, it, it really is. I've benefited enormously, and I think when you told me that, I was like, that is genius. Yeah, that's really And fun. we talked about – well, we actually won't share the, some of the ideas we talked about because those are secret yeah. for the moment. Uh, but right. what I will say Trade is secret. one quick thing for anyone that is considering that. Do you want to um, – give some representative sample of some of the kinds of companies that you've worked with or is that not oh, share some companies yeah, yeah just a couple just to give people a sense yeah it's on uh we have a separate website really it's more specific improvyourteam.com uh that lists let our the record show let the record show so I, i'm happy to talk about some of the companies we've worked with because it's on our website uh fairmont hotels and resorts is a, a precious client of ours which is also part of Accor hotels mm. uh, fidelity snapchat yahoo google uh, USC School of Neurology, mm. uh, uh, Keck School of Medicine, um, Pepperdine University, mm. uh, University of Texas School of Medicine. I don't know. I, there's, That's amazing. There's tons of them. One quick thing we'll talk about offline is that my last guest um, on my uh, my previous podcast uh, runs a, a charity here in LA called Teen Cancer America, but it's really across the U.S. And I mentioned I was going to be speaking with you, and I actually think the collaboration you might be able to do with that organization could be incredible. Great. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. I will so, leave you with this. We got a call a month ago from the United, from the, yeah, from the US, but from the Army. The Army wants to that's incredible. do some improv. That's so I'm great. Like, yeah. And as we said, yeah, I mean, the, what you saw and experienced and witnessed in Burundi could be replicated in so many war torn countries and so many different, inter, you know, um, international political stalemates of all sorts. And as you said, if you could do improv with someone in any one number of those countries that have tip, historically, um, you know, tricky diplomatic uh, relations with yeah. the US or other countries, improv is a brilliant solution it congress is. should be doing improv
I agree.